These are 8 common mistakes Viper players make and how to fix them. For the first mistake I see a lot of Viper players making is not grabbing the orb when they rotate. So for example, say you're playing B site on defense and you're going to place your orb here and you want to just play a little farther back and you're just kind of waiting to see if enemies push out of B long, pop your orb and if you were to just molly. But say they're not coming to B, say they're going to A and your teammates call out they're going A. Grab the orb and rotate with it. Because if you can tell if you were to just leave your orb here and not rotate with it, you can't use your orb to cover yourself while you plant. And that goes into my next mistake. And that next mistake is not using the orb to cover yourself while you defuse the bomb. Here's an example. That was crazy! Now this idea goes for all controller agents like Astra, Brimstone, Omen, even Harbor. Smoking yourself on the bomb is never a bad idea. Okay. Now we get him. Oh, no. They're both on HP. Nice. <laughs> the third mistake I see a lot of Viper players do is when they place their wall, they will just pop it immediately once the round starts. And your team doesn't even have time to push onto site. And by the time they do push on the site, the wall is going to fall down due to time and you're going to be stranded here on the site with no cover. So what you want to do instead is after you do place your wall, clear these angles with your team together. And then once you get closer and are ready to push with your initiators, that's when you want to pop the wall so you have the maximum amount of time for this wall to be up while you guys take control of site. The next mistake I see a lot of Viper players make is walking onto the site without your wall up. When they're fighting on Breeze, for example, you place your wall and there's gonna be some gunfights you have to challenge here. So the wall's gonna be up for a while before you guys are even able to go on the site. And say you guys do win your one or two gunfights here, the wall's gonna come down in that amount of time you guys took those fights. And now once you're pushing, you're gonna have people coming out from double doors, from up here on the bridge, from stairs. Everybody's rotating already and the wall's not up. So you're gonna be taking some damage. The next mistake a lot of Viper players make is not communicating their toxin time. One thing you wanna do as a Viper player is communicate when your abilities are going down. For example, if your wall is coming down because you guys took all those fights and you run out of that poison timer you gotta use your mic and call out to your teammates so they can be ready to take a fight okay and for my next tip i think you guys should know is when you're viper ulting you want to ult the entrance ways on defense and when you're playing offense you want to ult the cover the choke points for post plant so for example here is a good ult on fracture that you can use when you're playing on a site you just want to come up here and ult this ult gives you all the space up here, on the stairs, a little bit under here. They're going to have to walk through here if they want to come down from drop. And this doorway right here from A main is blocked off. So no matter what, if they want to get on site, they're going to have to walk through the pit. Now say you're playing offense and you want to ult one of the choke points post plant. So say I'm going to go right here and plant the bomb. So now that we have the bomb planted, they can come from either these stairs, that little ledge, or over here by a tower. One ult I like to do is making sure it covers tower and without exposing myself, you can kind of just like look at the doorway and ult. They're gonna have to walk up the stairs through the ult. They're gonna have to walk through this ledge into the ult. And if they're coming from tower, they're gonna have to come into the ult. Now this next tip is really gonna take some time and I feel like a lot more experience. You're gonna have to understand the timing of your mollies. So as a Viper player, her Viper mollies are a really important part of her kit. They last 5.5 seconds, and if you're going to be throwing molly lineups, you're going to have to account for the time that they're in the air to the time they land. And since they always keep nerfing Viper, you're going to have to want to have your smoke orb if you're playing those molly lineups. So for example, for my molly lineup spot on B, if I were to plant in that spot, I go in this corner, and say I hear them running on the site, maybe our teammate dies, I'm going to throw one molly just to know that they have to push me to get the bomb or kill everybody on the site. And that's going to take 5.5 seconds plus, and if they want to come over here, they're going to have to run all the way over here just to kill me. But say they don't know where I am, they're still trying to defuse a bomb. 
I throw my next one. And pop it, and if they're still waiting on the site, they're gonna die or the bomb's gonna blow up. That goes in my next tip is understanding the timing for all your abilities, like your wall and your orb. And if you're using them at the same time, the amount of time that they go down is cut in half. So they're both 15 seconds each. Your wall lasts 15 seconds both by itself, and your orb lasts 15 seconds by itself. But say you're playing A site, you have an orb to cover up here on the drop, and you have your wall covering here A main. If you place them both at the same time, the bar is just going to drain much faster. So you're only going to have 7.5 seconds instead of the 15 seconds for one or the other. Now for me, if I'm going to be playing these setups with uh, my orb and my wall like this, a main's a lot harder for them to come through if I just use my wall. And from the drop, they're not gonna just drop down right away until they get some clear info from the people A main or they're trying to lurk. But if I'm playing it safe back here, I'm gonna know if anyone drops here before I need to pop my orb. But say they are pushing both simultaneously, that's when you're gonna wanna have to pop both. And you're gonna have to call for your teammates to rotate super fast or else you only have seven and a half seconds before you are going to get pinched. Now the next mistake a lot of Viper players make is running out of their Viper pit. Once they walk in, they're gonna start decaying and you're gonna get some really, really easy kills. But what I see a lot of players do is other times you place your ult, they might fake rotate through A main and you wanna be the hero and try and get those kills while they're not looking, but hey, they're actually looking and you're gonna die. Your goal is to have this up as long as possible. So anybody that goes in here, they're gonna die. Theoretically, just don't miss. Now this is gonna be more of a personal preference, but in reality, I think using the Phantom is going to be more beneficial as a Viper player than if you were to use the Vandal. Say for you use the Vandal, you're shooting, they can see the bullets come out of this wall and that's gonna give away your position. So if anybody has like any sort of common sense to just shoot where the bullets are coming from, you're just gonna die. But on the other hand, if you have a Phantom, you place your wall up, you don't see the bullet tracers from the other side of the smoke. So in my opinion, I think the Phantom is a lot better. You can spray through it a lot easier than if you were to just tap fire a Vandal through a smoke. They won't be able to see that. And if you were to do that with a Vandal, the spray goes a lot more all over the place than a Phantom is more concise. So now for my next tip, as much as I love using Viper lineups, using your mollies to entry once in a while is a really good play and is something I highly recommend you do. What you can do is say you have a fade on your team, they eye somebody and they're back sight. Say they're behind this box right here. The fade eye spots them, you can just molly that. They're stuck and they have to either run to the left or right for an easy kill. Or another thing you can do is if you know nobody is back sight, say the fade eye clears here, we get information that there's nobody here, but we know someone is art and link or flower and link. What you wanna do is molly here, Molly here, so they can't just push out and kill you guys. This stops them from pushing out while you guys take control of the site. Now another mistake I do see Viper players making is not placing their wall in the right spot. Like if you're gonna wall for A, you don't wanna have it to where it's like this and it misses the top of the box because players can just sit up here, you know? And they can see everywhere you're coming from. If you're gonna wall like this, you're gonna have to make sure it lands on top of screens. So when you're walling, look at the mini map, okay? You can see where your wall is going and it doesn't need to be exactly like at the best spot. You just need to know if it's going on top of screens. And this right here, this is a lot better. Once it's going on top of the screens, players that are sitting up here, they're gonna have to be taking the damage in it or they're gonna have to sit behind it or get off of it. And I know a lot of players like using orb lineups, but that is gonna take some time. It's not gonna be as easy as placing the wall compared to throwing an orb lineup. You have to make sure there's no gaps in when you throw the orb. So if you were to throw your orb and it's a little short, say you place it right here, when you're crossing over, players can see you if they're sitting like in these weird angles, you know? Like they can't really see you from up top boiler from this angle, but if they're playing, like they're swinging out because they see an orb here, and they sit here, they're gonna be able to see where you are. So just make sure you're super precise when you're throwing your orb. It's gonna take practice, especially in customs, now that, that you can tell that where you're throwing it, see how on the mini map, it shows a little yellow circle of where it's gonna land. Use that as a guide when you're making your orb lineups. 
If this video helped you out at all, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below if you have any questions about anything I mentioned during this video, and hit that subscribe button for more Viper content. Don't forget to check out my Twitch streams where I play Viper live, and join my Discord server. All the links will be in the description below. Now, click on the next video here.